So guess what, everybody? There's this comedy place uh, in in Seattle. Now uh, I like Seattle as a city. You gotta give context. So I'm just I'm I'm gonna go gonna give context. <laughs> You're not. You're leaving out valuable context. So there's this comedy club called Com Capitol Hill Comedy Slash Bar, and just a quick prediction: they're not going to be around long. Why? You don't think the friendship dungeon will uh, turn things around? <laughs> 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 a friendship dungeon. I'll bet you that's exactly what it says. So, Kurt, did you get this email no, to okay, you? Okay, wait. How, where did, this where did the email okay. come from? So I have a bunch of dates that my manager got me. So I didn't know I had a date at this spot at all. The, so Kurt was, was, blue. Kurt was booked at this club, unbeknownst to him. No, I would have found out sooner or later. Yeah, but he did <laughs> Okay, so I'm sitting there, uh, uh, and uh, my he texts me, my manager texts me. Now, the, So the reason I texted you was you had just told me your Seattle thing where your the agent didn't go, this is crazy, this email. But my manager, he goes, I've never seen a message like this in my entire life. <laughs> oh, so this was a message that was sent to your manager. Okay, and I didn't understand it even had anything to do with me okay, at first so, because I just so kept seeing Dave Smith's name, okay? So yeah. Let me just show this one. So this was an email sent to Kurt's manager who booked him at this club in October. He didn't know. So it, this was an email sent at, from the club. Mm -hmm. From this club. This is the email. Okay. After careful consideration and discussion with our team, investors, <laughs> local comedians, <laughs> and neighborhood <laughs> and neighborhood advocacy groups. What? We've encountered a challenging situation that requires us to revisit the planned shows. Capitol Hill, that's the neighborhood and a comedy club, right? Uh, uh is known for its progressive values. And we receive, and some of those progressive values turn out to be groupthink and censorship. Capitol Hill is known for its progressive values and we've received significant feedback expressing concerns about the alignment of these upcoming shows with the neighborhood ethos. Oh, okay, Jimmy, let me just <laughs> let me just interject because this is my favorite thing of this. I, I'm not at all mad at all. Uh, this is a gift. Where, when I read this, I go, wait, isn't Capitol Hill where they set up the chat, the Chaz? Remember when that their neighborhood ethos was they seceded from the union? Yes. For so, the summer. <laughs> so th this is in that neighborhood in Seattle. Where they tried to set up this anarchist kind of four block radius. I didn't know it was back as part killing, of America. They ended up. They end, it was a it was a total joke. They ended up killing a kid. Yeah, it was a joke. Except when they killed like three unarmed teens. Ironic. Yes. The most ironic city in the world. It's known as. And so uh, let yeah. me let so me finish reading this. They have advocacy groups that weigh in on comedy bookings. They have advocacy groups. <laughs> That weigh in on comedy bookings. I'm going to venture to say they don't. Uh, this feedback includes concerns from local advocacy groups that are deeply embedded in our demented mental community and work towards upholding its values. Okay. First of all, comedy is not about upholding any value except comedy. And what comedy is, is supposed to poke holes in the status quo and make people uncomfortable. That's the best form of comedy. That's no. Lenny Bruce. That's George Carlin. That's Bill Dude. Hicks. That's Sam Kinison. That's that's Don Rickles. Boomers. Oh, you mean boomers? Jimmy, the comedy doesn't even figure in. Upholding its values, they shit on the sidewalk there. That, I know. You have. You have. I mean, do, but the, the so thing let's, is, this let's is finish all reading up. this. Okay. <laughs> Given the feedback, and to avoid any potential negative impact on both our club. And the artists involved, as well as to maintain the harmony within our community. We believe the most responsible course of action is to not move forward with the shows for Dave Smith. Well, I get it. He's a scumbag racist. <laughs> <laughs> so Dave that, Smith doesn't align. <laughs> Dave Smith. Luis Gomez. Dave Smith, who's the anti-war guy who just dismantled people about their support for the genocide in Gaza. That guy. Well, I bet so, you they're not familiar with that work. They probably know him from the Legion of Skanks podcast. So then also Luis J. Gomez. Now, I'm not totally familiar with who he is. 
Um, well, uh, is, is, I would say he's the ringleader of this group. Okay. <laughs> okay. Big J. Wait, where's Big J? Is so hang on. on. So then. J oh, Jay wasn't even on it. Jim Florentine. I don't know why he got grouped in. I don't understand. And it says, sadly, Kurt Metzger. Yeah, it was a deep cut. That's why I have sympathy for her. Because she didn't want to do it. This decision was not made lightly. And we want to ensure it does not reflect on your talent and the quality of your work. But it reflects on how mental we are at this comedy club and how mental our community is and how demented and ridiculous a comedy booker thinks that they have to consult outside advocacy groups to let her know how to book her own comedy club. Comedy clubs are not supposed to be a safe space. Are you gonna comedy man, clubs are explain it now. Right. I'm going to mansplain it. Thanks. Oh, boomer mansplanation. Coming people, through. people don't want to go to a comedy club and feel like they have the same ethos they do when they go to an office, when they go to work. They go to comedy clubs to be free of that shit. I know. You would think people that shit on the sidewalk would understand freedom. So it keeps going. <laughs> we will also ensure that any tickets sold are refunded promptly to our patrons, and we will communicate the decision to them with the sensitivity and respect. So That's any, what I'm doing. Any comedy club wrapped up in words like sensitivity and community values, and that's not a real comedy club. They're, they're, they're cosplaying comedy. And what they're doing is practicing groupthink, because if you go outside their groupthink, you no matter no matter how funny you are, no matter the quality of your comedy, you will not be allowed there. You know what you sound like right now, John Stewart supporting Trump. We will also jokes. we will also ensure that any tickets sold are okay. We truly value the art of comedy and the diverse perspectives it mm. brings to our lives. No, you don't. Uh, you don't. Because if you truly valued a diverse perspective that comedy brings, you wouldn't be canceling people because they don't go along with your groupthink. You would actually invite people who challenged your groupthink. That's what comedy is supposed to do. That's what grown-ups are supposed to do. Well, you're talking to the Chaz. So it's so it's our hope that we can find a way to work together in the future. Why would you ever why are you moving want to work <laughs> are you moving out of yeah. the dumbest place on earth why would you ever want to be in business with people like this that cancel you even though at the same time they tell you you're a great comedian but because some people who aren't affiliated with the comedy club don't like you well that's um, how it's worked for quite some time and you know remember in portlandia was a show yeah i didn't watch it okay well i liked it, it was a fun show but i, I it liked ended, the way it ended Portland felt about comedy the way Afghanistan feels about us. Like like Fred and Carrie left in a chopper and <laughs> they weren't welcome back. Oh, really? And, and it was like, oh, look how silly. And like, like they used to describe an alternate universe where Al Gore w uh, won the election. And, and like, so that's how liberals, rich liberals look at these city. And they were fun like that. Okay. But what happened is the, the runoff of their lifestyle, which is what the Chaz truly is, that, and it's chemical runoff and it makes their hair change color. The natives there got real restless with the weird, like, neoliberal fucking colonizers, and they just had a crazy person rebellion. And uh, and so now they live in this weird, like, that's the socialism they have. Not like you ha have, everyone has a toilet. <laughs> the socialism of, before I book a really small-time comedy venue that's going to go out of business, I have to consult open micers. Uh, the investors, I guess mom, uh, a homeless guy outside, uh, a, a local ra a SoundCloud rapper. Like, that meant, th that's what they built there. That's like what's left of it after, it, so it's really like a, an amazing, uh, uh, you can see all of society in it. This is amazing. So, uh, we, we want to work together in the future under different circumstances. You mean when you actually decide to book a comedy club instead of cosplay at your kind of woke uh i don't know what you would even call this no, it's not, uh, well i do do magic too if, we if, are committed uh, to making that. the transition as smooth as possible you should you're gonna you know what else you know what other transition you're gonna be making you're gonna make a transition to being closed yeah I yeah mean, get ready for that transition because it's coming hey i got it, good news for you the current uh because no punks. comedian <laughs> no comedian that is actually funny and worth their salt is going to now work this club after you just canceled comedians because they didn't go along with your group think 
No comedian, a, no self-respecting comedian is going to work this place because you just canceled a bunch of comedians because you don't like their politics. I and it's not I even about their politics. Yeah, it's it's really just... It's not, If it's about politics, I would respect you. This is about the the losers that I'm surrounded by in my clique, okay? It's like, wait, forget about comedy. I'm around a bunch of losers and I am such like half of a scared person that I think that I'm accountable to every you mean maniac. You're speaking as if you're the booker. Yes. You're, yes. You're, you're, to you're, Jess with one S. Yeah. Anderson. Jess with one S, by the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're saying she's surrounded by losers. Yeah, you're like, speaking you in doing? the first person. You don't have any self worth to like. Forget about comedy. No. It's, it's the Seattle. answer is no, Kurt. Let me finish reading okay. this. Uh, discuss any concerns or questions you may have. My, my, my question would be why do you want to be involved in comedy? Because it doesn't sound. It sounds like you want to be involved in safe spaces. Well, the same reason that they wanted to be involved in like Spider-Man movies. <laughs> we but, want to turn the thing into a thing that you don't like. So this and Jess Anderson, one S comedy slash bar owner. She's the owner. I feel bad for her. I feel bad for her. I I don't. Um, I do. I, but listen, I, we, I, you don't look at like people trapped in a fucking terrible place. And it, it no, it she's not. You're not trapped. She's not trapped. She can do whatever she wants. She's a grown up person. She's Joe, the boss of her own body. And she's Joe, the boss of her own comedy club. And this is something she's deciding to do. Um, and just like it takes it takes inner fortitude to not be a button pushing hack comedian because it works. And it takes fortitude to actually be original and to and and, it, and you have to be willing to get kicked in the chin She's not willing to do any of that stuff. There's a price to pay, I guess, to actually book actual comedy in this mental, demented uh, neighborhood, and she's not willing to pay that price. So guess what? You're going to go out of business, Jess right. with one S. What is the price? Having people show up? Yeah. The, <laughs> what are you like? Well, she the, the, those people who, for, for whatever reason, she wants to have be, be look nicely upon her. They're not going okay, to look nicely I'll upon her. You. Here, let me make upon her anymore. That's the price that she has to one, pay. So. Say la vie, <laughs> Jess. Uh, here's their comedy calendar. Do uh, you want to see some of the great shows they have? Is Michael Rappaport going to be there? Oh, maybe Michael Rappaport. No, that, this is the one. <laughs> look, I'll leave bet your you troubles at know, the door. Yeah. Comedy Jam. Uh, I like that ethos. I don't know who Max Amini is. Do you know who that guy is? I don't know who that guy is. I met him one time at the Laugh Factory. Don't know him or have any feelings about him uh, either way. Okay, I don't know who he is. He he's, he could be funny. He's sold I mean, out. He's great. I don't His APM is sold out. Look at that. So good I mean, for him. Good for I'm Matt. glad he's not violating any of the local he values. He must not. He's not violating any of the local values. Our social norms need to be upheld, Jimmy. So if Jerry Seinfeld wanted to play your club, would you be okay play, w working no. him? Even though no, they would not. Even though no, all he not. talks about is is nothing. He talks about cotton That's balls not why. and socks. That's not why. But you would book him. Even though he supports the the genocide in Gaza, they would not support. I promise you, they would not book him because he said my dumb co coffee show with cars. Uh -huh. whatever, oh yeah, it didn't have to be. Uh, it's not Seinfeld. To his credit, for a guy that's who right makes a show about nothing. That guy, he every time sticks up for the right goddamn thing with comedy, which is shut up, Seattle blue hair. Yeah, and be this funny. Ain't your college. Right. So I give him. So they was, would never book him. They hate him for so that. So they asked Jerry Seinfeld why he didn't have a more diverse group of comedians, more people of color and women on his show. And his that's show because, being dry, wait, yeah. his show being driving in cars or getting comedians getting coffee <laughs> in cars, and he he just rejected that and said, you know, that's I don't play that game, and this is about funny. I'm into funny, and so these are people I like and I think are funny, and if you like that, you should watch it, and I don't, I'm not doing that game. So you're probably right. They wouldn't book him there. No, and by the way, the reason that there weren't more people of color on is because people of color don't give a shit about driving in cars to get coffee with comedians. <laughs> so uh, queer, <laughs> Queers to the Front. That's a show they have booked there, Queers to the Front. I uh, bet there's so, some in the back, so too. So it's Open Mic, Queers to the Front, Open Mic. Leave your troubles at the door. You know, and by the way, it's a little self-righteous, to say to kick me off the your your block of me and Louis J Gomez and Dave Smith and then start calling people queers that's a little phobic. <laughs> Let's see what else we can see on this. Uh, Washington's funniest mammal. <laughs> I do want to know what they it, have I a roast curious. battle. How could you have a roast battle and play nice and still 
and and play nice. You have to play nice and uphold community values. Um, well, um, it's more of a baking. What is this? Is this pop up open mic? Wait, a pop up. You have a established business. A pop up is <laughs> when you don't have a building in a. <laughs> we're just gonna spontaneously throw a comedy show inside so, a comedy club. So why do you think they call it Washington uh, Washington's funniest mammal? Because I didn't want to say person or woman or male or comedian. Oh, I thought they were going to bring animals. So if they say comedian, that would imply a male. If they say comedian, that would imply would a it? female. That, that, I'm sure that's what that... Why would they use mammal, Kurt? Well, it is one of my pronouns. Um, and then the dope, the dope show. Well, that's probably the best one because they uh, have dope. Yeah. Let's wow. see. Well... Say, oh, say goodbye to some... your club, uh, Copper Capital Hill. And then when is the methadone line? Yeah. <laughs> <We're, I don't... laughs> so that was fun. That was funny to me. Hey, and... Clean Fent Sundays is a good show, too. <laughs> so that was funny. Wow. That is, that is mental. Well, uh, look, it, it really, I hate punching down the phrase. I, I hate it. But it is punching down to Jess with one S. Um, but I'm not mad at her. And it's uh, important for her because... Now that woke is dying, and it's dying. There's no point even saying it. There's no point in saying it. it's dying. Um, a lot of the people that went along with it are gonna, like in Glorious Bastards, try to blend back into society. Yeah. Okay. And now, not physically in real life, but just with my words and mockery, you're gonna have to imprint that symbol on their head. The only punishment they deserve is mockery. Nothing more than that. But we have to do it so that this can never happen again. So what's next? And that's the point that I, I feel an obligation to society to make fun of. Obviously, there's some loser at a place that's failing. I don't I don't hate her or feel angry, angry, but everyone needs to see, don't have the class to not talk shit about this because it has to go away. And it's the only way we're going to get rid of it is mockery. So they so what where do you what are they what, what so do, do you draw the line at would you book a comedian who voted the wrong way? <laughs> what if a comedian you found out voted for for oh, for Trump, would you just well? The community said they feel threatened. Do they it's have not, a don't ask, don't tell policy at least for that? It's not a safe space. <laughs> I have a show called "Tell Us Who You Voted For," and we have like a guillotine <laughs> in the back. Go on, you have five minutes. <laughs> that is so, again, uh, twenty-two percent of uh, black voters voting for Trump. Would you cancel them? It's, this is just yes, so. Yes. This is this is this is someone who opened a comedy club who shouldn't. That's what that is. Yes, it's called an open mic comedian. There's two yeah. kinds of people who open clubs. There's the comic who's like, I don't know where it's gonna go, but I know the business. I'll open it. Okay. Well, there's three. There's the bar owners who just want to make money. Well, the other one's the business guy. There's the business people. Right. Then there's the people that did it, but they don't totally do it. And there's yes. variations of all of them. Yes. Like some I like a lot and some they all have their ups and downs and faults. But none of them are Seattle Chaz open micers. People, never mind comedy, just any business. You guys are going to have to figure out how economics works first before you even tackle something like this. Because this is an easy business. That's why I moved to Los Angeles, so I could get on television, so people would know who I was, so I could start selling tickets. And that all happened. I got on television right away. I, I First couple of years, I was on NBC like five or six times. Yeah, great head of hair. And uh, I had a great head of hair. <laughs> so and then I got on Comedy Central. I got a couple <laughs> of Comedy Central specials. Ironically... I didn't really that, that didn't really help me sell tickets that much. No, Comedy it Central is a defunct channel now. I no, believe. it's still around. Oh. It wasn't until my YouTube channel that really I started selling yes. tickets. So things have changed. So you don't you can you can be a comedian, live anywhere you want, and because of social media, because of YouTube and Rumble and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, you can find an audience, and well, then got, you, and then you can tour. These are the people that are cool out there. Are like extra cool because they live in such an uncool, stupid That's place. That's the thing. So they're funny to live there, and and not be dumb. They have to be funny. So when I was yeah. in Seattle, uh, we played a venue, Washington Hall, run by criminals. Uh, on their website, it says they have two hundred seats, and they sold five hundred and thirty tickets to my show. And then they got mad at the audience because the audience was upset that they paid money and they wouldn't give them a chair. So that's the kind of criminals that run the Washington Hall. This is the only reason I sent you the email because um, I thought it was the same thing that you were you were telling me that the other day that they 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 like fire exit <laughs> overbook the tickets. Yeah, and uh, I was like, is this same place? Because it's so weird to send an email. 
but again, didn't know I was booked on the show yeah. when I got the email. And uh, I thought maybe it was the same, but Capitol Hill, that's where it really went down. Okay, well, good good luck, Capitol Hill Comedy Bar, to figuring out good what, luck, Hill. what comedy's all about. Good luck to the comedy's, police department there. I don't often say that. Comedy's not about creating safe spaces. That's that's not what comedy's about. Just so, just so you know, that's the opposite of comedy. That's well, called you know, work. That's okay, called when you go to work. It, I say that's it called is. when you. That's called a DSA meeting. That's not called a comedy show. Um, I don't. I I disagree. It is a safe space. Their definition of safe is, is as wrong. Dumb yes. as vaccine woman democracy. That's right. Yeah. You, the definition of safe is stupid. A comedy is where we can safely have some laughs. That's right. Okay. And, and that that's in we, the dark. Yeah, yeah, in the dark, uh, very drunk. I mean, it's also a bar. <laughs> That's right. But it's safer than a bar. Hey, come see us live on tour in Los Angeles, Palm Springs, Stockholm, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Berlin, Copenhagen, Oslo, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, right outside Pittsburgh, El Paso, and San Antonio, Texas. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm-hmm.